The Bible says it indeed that the heart of man is desperately, desperately wicked. But that portion of scripture has never really spoken to me like it spoke to me after this incident happened. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Elma and this is my space for inspiration, our space for inspiration. Thank you so much for stopping by. So we're diving right into the video and I'm going to be narrating you all something really shocking and terrible that happened to someone in my area or in the place where I grew up, okay? A close friend. A close family relative so there was this beautiful classy lady you know when I say beautiful I mean she was so beautiful like she was intelligent she was very very educated and she above all had a very very good job like in her area of in the area where she was living it was considered like she she, she had the ideal life okay she could we can say she had the ideal life but like you know there was this aspect of it she wasn't married, she was very, very much single, and she was in her late, maybe late 40s, okay? But yeah, every woman has a chance to get married, right? So she was living her life, she was good, she was kind, she was friendly to the people around her, and all those kind of things. So one day, she didn't know that her life was about to change forever. Her life was going to have something new coming in. She didn't see that coming, okay? So she was busy going about her activities, busy doing her things. She didn't know. And then she got this call, like, you have to come to the hospital immediately. So she was panicking. She was wondering what could be the problem, like what could be happening. And then they told her, your elder sister is sick. Now she quickly rushed to the hospital. Her elder sister, mind you, she was pregnant. And at the same time, her elder sister gave birth but she was diagnosed of a terminal disease okay so in the shock of the moment she quickly rushed to the hospital to see her sister in a very critical condition her sister couldn't talk or do anything and her sister had just put to birth oh my god talking about tragedy now this lady in her usual calm beautiful and kind manner in her in her all her her, her kind heart you know she had to stay to take care of her sister and take care of the newborn baby, you know. So she was in the hospital with her sister for some days. And then it was agreed that it's better for her to take the baby home so that she can mend the baby. Since the baby, you know, a newborn baby, she's just so tender. And this baby was beautiful. And that was how this lady's life began to change, you know. One day you're single, one day you're not, you're not having a child. And then the next morning, something happens and then you find that you're having a child. You know, it was a bittersweet pill for her because her sister was at this point sick and at the same time she was in the hospital, you know, so she had to find a way to balance the two. Now, she brought the baby home and she had the privilege to name the baby. Like from birth, she was there with the baby and she had to stay with the baby in her home. So, while staying with the baby, she kept going back to the hospital from time to time to check on her sister and she kept, um, you know, coming back home to take care of the baby. You know, she had to start learning how to do everything. Someone who was not prepared to, for motherhood suddenly just overnight became a mother. Now, when she came back home one day, she was called to quickly come to the hospital like there was something. Her, her sister actually was having, she was diagnosed of having cancer, which was at the advanced stage and there was nothing that could be done to cure her cancer. So she went to the hospital and was hit with the sad news of the passing of her sister. So she was heartbroken. It was mixed feelings for her, but at the same time, she was thankful to God that her sister went and indirectly her sister came back to her daughter. So that was how she became a full-time mom to the child. It was, it was amazing to see how she took care of the baby, how, how it was like she had been prepared for it all her life. That was someone who wasn't even thinking that the next day she's going to wake up having a child. But mind you, she just woke up and then had this baby. What a blessing from God. So... That was how she became a full-time mom, minding her business, going about her job. She found a way to cope and she was doing the job so well. Everyone around her was marveled at how, how, how loving she was, how caring she was, how she could take care of the baby so, so well. It was almost like she had, been, she had gone through some kind of training. So, she, mind you, she wasn't married at this time. So, she kept going about her daily activities. And then, you think this story has a rosy ending but unfortunately life is not always how we think it to be another thing happened one fine day this young gentleman 
handsome, intelligent, having a good job, you know, he looked very promising, walks into her life. <laughs> what happens? She's so, like, she has always been this independent lady. She's used to doing her stuff. She's used to minding her space. She's there with her child, taking care of her child and every kind of thing. And then this man comes into her life, you know. The first thing he did to kind of lure her to his side was the love he showed to her child. She, the child even started calling him daddy. What more could the mother ask for? She's like, okay, if you can be a, a, a father to a child with, who is not yours, it means that definitely he's going to be a good husband. But unfortunately, that's not how, how life works, you know. Things always happen and things change. So every time this man would come to her house, visit the baby, play with the baby. By this time, she was already grown. The baby was grown. She was maybe like two to three years old. Yeah, it was a while back since her mom passed away. So... He comes to her house, plays with the baby, takes care of the baby. And this lady is looking, oh my God, what a fine gentleman. But this lady had one problem. There was one major problem she had. She has always been somebody who is God-fearing. She loved God. She loved to spend time in the church. She loved to attend Bible study. But on the contrary, her man or the man who was, you know, coming into her life and preaching her the love story and trying to tell her about marriage, you know, he was someone who didn't go to church. He was someone who you wouldn't see him praying and all those kind of things. So in her list, maybe he checked all the boxes. You know how every woman will have your checklist of the things you want to see. Like you have your top list and then the bottom list. You say, okay, if this person has managed to pass this amount, then it means we can be compatible. Most women do that. So in her checklist, caring, yes, money, yes, kind, yes, loving, yes, everything. But she had this one problem. This man didn't have the fear of God in him. But this man, in, his, in all of his intelligence, he played the first one. You know what he said? You know the promises men make these days? Somebody will tell you like, there was this guy I knew. He, he, he was promising marriage to a friend and he was telling her like, ah, oh, don't worry, I'm going to come to your church. If you want me to come and marry in your church, I'll marry you in your church. I don't mind. You know, those are the things people say to lure you to get into whatever it is they want. So this man, in all his awesomeness and his calm nature, you know, he, he told this lady, he said, um, I don't mind coming to your church. If you want me to come for Bible study, I will come for Bible study. Anything you want, I will just do it for you. I'm willing to change. We can make it work. You know, the sweet promises they make. So her fear was finally over. Like, if he can do this thing for me, it means that this is the right person for me. But hey, she was not too quick to, to say yes, okay? So, this man, you see, in the Bible study class, he would be the first person at the door. He would even be waiting for the pastor to come and open the door for him to enter. He prays, he studies, he has questions. And the pastor, like, many people around were impressed, like, wow, wow, he's really making the effort. He's really doing it. So, that was how he won the heart, finally, of this beautiful lady, you know. And then, everything was said. She finally said, yes. And, you know, everything seemed beautiful. They were already having a child with, you know, they, she already had a child. So automatically the child became his. So before getting married, it seemed like everything was good, promising and all those kind of things. So this man, he, 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 he decided to start planning a beautiful wedding. They planned the wedding. They did the, the court wedding. The pictures were amazing. It was beautiful. They went and did a big church wedding. Oh, my God. M people of high high class high class people were the ones you could see in this wedding yeah she was a simple person but she was having a good job the guy too was having a good job so you could see all calibers of people in this wedding the high and mighty middle class everybody was present to celebrate with them the marriage was good everything seemed beautiful you would love to say that is the end of the story but unfortunately there's more to this story okay so keep watching and please if you've not if you've not like this video to this point please kindly like the video subscribe so that you continue to enjoy those beautiful stories okay now finally they got married and then she moved into his house then just a few months after the wedding this lady realized that she was seeing some red flags in that marriage like oh you know when the honeymoon phase is over in marriage it's always all rosy 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 this one doesn't want to step on the toes of this one. A doesn't want to step on the toes of B. I don't want to do this thing that is going to make this person angry. You know, those, the bliss in the marriage when it's still, it's still new. 
And then after the honeymoon phase is over, you face reality. That's when you begin to wake up in the morning and you look at someone's face and be like, hey, is this how his face was? Why didn't I realize these things? Yeah, is this how her face was? Why didn't I realize these things, you know? That was what happened to this lady. She started seeing some red flags, you know? Little, little, little tips here and there like, hmm? Is this the man I married? Can this man be like this? And, you know, those kind of things. So after like the first six to seven months of her marriage, she just packed her things up one day and left the house. She's like, nah, I'm not taking this. I need to, not like she was divorcing him. She just like, you know how couples will say, I need space, I need space. So she packed up her things and be like, okay, I'm leaving the house for some time. She went away for some time, took off some time, some space, you know, she went away. And then she, she felt like, okay, we just, just to make sure we don't quarrel, we don't fight. Let's just take some time off. Let's just take some time apart. That was how she went to her family place, to her family home, stayed there for a while. And then, you know, but within that time, she was pregnant already. Okay. She was pregnant for this guy. She, so during that time, she decided to take a break for like a short while. And then she went away to her family home to stay for a while. And then after some time, she came back. And everything seemed okay. She became pregnant and then she gave birth. So a lot of people realized that, realized some things that were happening to show that everything was not fine in that marriage. Immediately, the man got married to her. He didn't only stop attending the Bible study. He didn't only stop attending church. He made her to stop attending Bible study as well. And he made her to stop even going to church. He's like, if you go to that church, if I find your feet in that church, you are going to, I'm going to divorce you or I'm going to do something to you. You know, those kind of things. She was no longer free to be herself anymore. Before you know it, she had fallen out of church. She was no longer going to church. She was no longer going to Bible study. She was just there in her home. She became a shadow of herself, you know. She said, I'm sure she was thinking in her mind, she'll be like, okay, I can do this. I can make this work. I'm just doing this for my marriage so that my marriage should be stable, so that I should be happy in my home. But So after she gave birth, see, a woman just gave birth and the husband, he went there to see the child. And then after the day they were supposed to, to, to come back from the hospital, he didn't go to receive them. He just said, I'm going to send a car to come and get you. Not like he was busy or anything. He just stayed at home doing nothing. So... This lady was like, if you're going to send a car to come and take me, then I'm not going to come. If you're not going to come pick me up yourself. And he's like, okay, you can do whatever you want. At that point, he didn't care anymore. You know, the marriage was going, getting worse. Things were getting worse. So he sent the car to pick her up and then she refused to follow him. She refused to come with him in the car or anything. She went back to her family house. So after some days, she went to clear her head. And then after, after a while, she decided to come back home. Little did she know that that man was slowly drifting away from the marriage. He had some other plans. So when she came back to the house, she was staying, trying to, you know, every, she did everything. Before people get to the point of divorce, you must know that they've tried maybe everything, everything possible to make that marriage work and it doesn't work. So it means it cannot work. There's nothing that can be done anymore. So when he came back, when she came, when she came back to, to, to the house, she was staying, trying to make her home work. It wasn't going, nothing was working. Little did she know that this man had silently left their home. Well, he had gone, found another woman, and he was staying in another place with that woman. So actually, he was having two homes. Oh my God. He was managing two homes. He goes, stays with the other lady, comes back, stays with his wife, and those kind of things. And he was even planning to divorce the wife. You know? She was there, trying, 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 you know, pushing and it wasn't, you could really see the misery on her face. If you could compare her before marriage and after marriage, you'd be like, hey, if this is how marriage is, then I'd rather, I'd rather be, I'd rather remain single. So she was there managing the, the managing life. And then she, she spoke to a few people around, tried to tell them about the things she was facing in her marriage. And normally nobody will ever advise you to say, uh, go and get a divorce. No, they won't advise you to do so. You're the one that will wake up on your own and decide whatever you want to do. Because it's your home. You know how to manage it or you know how to make it work or you know how to make it work. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. So this lady, she had made up her mind. She's like, okay, I'm done here. Enough is enough. You know, I cannot continue to, to stay with this kind of man. And then some people, a few people around were advising her. You just try, keep trying, keep praying he might change, you know, and those kind of things. And as, as a person, like someone who fears God, she didn't want to have that stigma of being divorced. Now, this fateful day in the night, like around 7 to 8 p.m. on a very rainy day, 
neighbors were awoken to the sound of shouting and crying and screaming by her husband. And when they rushed to the scene to see what had happened, because apparently the last people who had spoken to this lady had told her to, she said she's about to, to leave the house or something like that. They had advised her, you don't leave. She said, this man has actually even left the house. He hardly comes in. They were like, just keep trying. So neighbors were awoken to the sound of screaming and shouting and crying from her husband. And then they rushed to the scene. And what did they find? They found her on her bed, murdered in cold blood. She had been butchered. You could find patches of, of this cutlass. There's something in Africa called cutlass. They use it to like cut her body into small, small parts. You could see something, some sharp object. You could see that she was laying on the bed, stone cold, dead. She had been murdered. Now questions were arising. What happened? What happened? How can she, how can she just die? It's not a common thing here that people just kill people like that. It's not common you, you, in her house for that matter. And then they began to ask her husband, where were you when this incident happened? And the man was like, it was raining. And I wanted to go and buy something from the market. And I took the kid along. I took the baby along with me to go and buy something. And then when I came back, I found her in this state. But it didn't make sense because the dots were not connecting. Like what is so urgent on a rainy day that you go to buy something. And it's only on that rainy day that someone thinks that you can come and murder your wife. Was it that they were monitoring your wife? Where somebody, was it, did the person break in? Was there any break in? Was the door locked? Did she struggle? You could see from the thing that you could see that she had struggled with somebody. The way her body was looking, it's like she had struggled with somebody. So the dots were not connecting. How would you say you went on a rainy day to buy something? How did the person know that it was on that particular day that they could come into your house and, and murder your wife? No, no, no. The dots were totally not connecting. So this man was brought into the police station for questioning. Like, what happened? And he still remained the same. He said, I left her at home. We were fine. We have no problem. And they were asking him, did you quarrel with your wife? He said, no, we didn't quarrel. Did you fight? Did you guys have any sort of misunderstanding or anything? No, we didn't. And then what happened to her? She just died. So the dots were not connecting. That was when neighbors began to cry foul. And they said, no, things were not fine in this home. There was a lot of chaos. And there were a lot of things that were happening that were going wrong. This woman had cried many times that she was about to leave this marriage. But... Nobody listened and they were just trying to make sure she tries to make her marriage work. But apparently it didn't go well and it ended like really badly. So when neighbors and everything and all the evidence was coming in, that's when the man was taken to prison, well, locked up for a while for questioning that. But his, his tale has remained the same, that he didn't kill his wife. So till now, he hasn't been convicted. He still claims that he didn't do it. So my question is, you watching, I'd like to know your opinions on this. After hearing the story, what do you think? Do you think that it was a coincidence that this man went out on a rainy day and came back and met his wife badly, brutally murdered? On the same day it was rainy? Like, on the same, at the same time or era in their lives when they were having chaos in their marriage, at the same time when this man was moving in with another woman and staying together and you say, you weren't guilty? Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, this video has gone far too longer than I had planned for it to go. So, I want us to learn some lessons from this story. Number one, no human being is capable of changing a person. Nobody has the power to change somebody. So, if you see red flags in any relationship, think twice before you go into that relationship. Not because somebody is trying to impress you by the little, little things. We women, but is it carried away by gifts? the show of love and the flashy things and we feel like oh unfortunately she wasn't interested in those things but the way the place i feel like she made a little bit of a, a little mistake was the fact that you she felt that the man could change you know she she was deceived it's just the plans of the, the like you know the devil can always strategize any kind of thing to make it look good sometimes photocopy of something looks even better than the original she was living her life she was peaceful she was happy she had her money but Unfortunately, the devil came to just snatch her life away from her. Now leaving her two children, like her, her, her two children now, have no mother. See what happens. So nobody should come and lure you to do something that you don't want to do with the in the name of, I am going to change. In the name of, 
I am going to change. I will make it well. You, you don't have, even they don't have that capability of making themselves change. It is the power of God. It's only God and the Holy Spirit that can make somebody change. So let nobody come and deceive you that I will change for your sake. After marriage, you will see the real colors of these people. So think twice before getting into marriage. Like know what you want. Know that we are compatible. We can understand ourselves. We can make this thing work. We are reasonable enough. We can pray together. A couple that prays together stays together. Hmm? So I, I, I've, I just felt like I should share the story. Please let me know in the comment section what you think. You know, I like, I like us to interact. Let us think. Do you think this man is truly innocent of the death of his wife? And secondly, I would like you all to tell me what you think about people who say, I'm going to change after marriage. Do you think people can really change or do we really have the capability of changing a person? So for now, I'm going to NEK and this is episode one of my podcasting, okay? So I'm going to be doing this very, very kind of stories so that we learn from them, we share our ideas. And if you feel like you have your story which you want me to share or you want to come on and share, I'm always open. You can contact me on Facebook, Instagram, m all my, my information on social media is on, on my description. You can just check me out and check out, my, check out my channel and let me know what you think, okay? So let's end it here, episode one. Episode two is coming up next and I have another fun and interesting story for you all. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share my videos, okay? You're going to be getting this kind of interesting content every single time on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.